When we think of redwood trees, we typically think of massive trees only found along the California and Oregon coast. But did you know that once upon a time, redwoods also grew in south central Colorado? Stick around and learn as we explore the Florissant Fossil Beds National Monument. Hey fellow expeditionists! We're at Florissant Fossil Beds National Monument. Approximately 34 million years ago, this area of Colorado was a lush stream valley with a much warmer climate. Redwoods grew here, standing more than 230 feet tall, many of which were up to a thousand years old. But the valley was surrounded by a cluster of volcanoes known as the Guffey Volcanic Center. Huge volcanic mud flows spread into the forested valley, burying the bottom 15 feet of these majestic trees. While the upper portions of the trees rotted away, the buried stumps turned into stone. The streams became dammed by volcanic debris, and the valley flooded, creating a lake which deposited sediment, forming layers of shale and conglomerate that were rich in fossils. Florissant fossil beds has yielded more than 50,000 museum specimens including 15,000 insects and 150 plant fossils. So redwoods is something we typically think of as being on the west coast, like in California and Oregon and beyond. And yet here we are in central Colorado with these giant stumps of the remains of ancient redwoods. So, how do you explain that catfish? How did we get redwoods in Colorado? Well, this area was once an inland lake and the climate was much warmer back then. Mm-hmm, it was a whole different, I mean, 34 million years ago, that was, that's, that's something to think about. That time frame is hard for us to really grasp, isn't it? Yeah. So catfish, if we were walking right here like we are now, 34 million years ago, what would that be like? Well, we would be underwater. Oh, yeah, forgot. So for me, probably the only downside to fluorescent fossil beds is just the fact that Pretty much all of your fossils have been collected, that can be collected, and are spread out through many museums some thousands of miles away, you know? So those original fossils, you know, you can't come here and go to some side of the hill and see them anymore. They've long been collected. So pretty much all you've got now is the history of the place and all these giant redwood fossilized stumps, petrified stumps, I should say. We did actually see some of those fossils when we visited the University of Colorado Natural History Museum. So we're rocking here, of course, 34 million years ago, was a lake. So technically this is a very ancient lake bed. But what would you call it now? Well, it's pretty dry now. This looks more like a short grass prairie. Mm -hmm. It's interesting though, the things that are growing here, huh? Yeah. Varied, varied stuff. Well, before this area was protected, tourists would come and collect pieces of the fossils. So these here were probably much, once much bigger than they used to be. The area wasn't protected. The fossil beds became world famous in the early 20th century, becoming a major tourist attraction with lodges and dude ranches. One of the most famous visitors was Walt Disney who actually purchased one of the smaller redwood petrified stumps and it is still on display to this day at Disneyland in Florida. However, the petrified stumps were not well protected and many visitors chipped away at them, taking home souvenirs. In the 1960s, a developer was attempting to buy the property and turn it into a golf resort 
and that's when a Colorado senator stepped in to save these ancient treasures. And in 1969, Fluorescent Fossil Beds National Monument was created. All right, so we just did the Petrified Forest Trail. We're now heading up the Geologic Trail, which tells kind of a different story about what brought this valley of redwoods to an end with some volcanic activity. This is called Pikes Peak Vanit. Pikes Peak Vanit began 1.08 billion years ago as a large molten igneous intrusion, in which case the magma intruded into pre existing rocks and then cooled slowly. This is what created the Pikes Peak Vanit. So, some of this rock here in front of us is uh, remnants of what they call the Wall Mountain Tuff. And tuff is a rock that is composed of compacted volcanic ash from an eruption that happened some 37-ish million years ago. So here we're overlooking the uh, Fluorescent Formation Valley, what was once the lake bed. And 34 million years ago, there would have been a huge volcano on the horizon there. And today, we can still spot an ancient volcano in Mount Pisgah. Well, that's pretty much gonna do it today for our little exploration at Florissant Fossil Beds National Monument. There's many more trails here to be seen in the forests and such. We just came out here mainly to see the fossils. Catfish, what did you think about it? Those petrified redwoods were really cool, and the history and information on the volcanic events and stuff was neat. Yeah, it's just, the history here is really interesting, and it's just kind of mind-boggling to think about the time and the forces that have taken place just in this one little area. Huh? Mm -hmm. All right, well, got more adventures to go to. Till next time, peace, peace out. out.